Well, here we go again. <laughs> hi, Chuck. Um, hi, everybody. Um, this question uh, kind of follows on from Andy's question about uh, tempo. This is a very similar question. Everybody must be... Is this Mitch Keith? Yes. All right. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. <laughs> um, this must be... Um, yeah, everybody must be thinking about uh, tempo, timing, and counter time. It must be the zeitgeist, because um, Mitch's question is very similar. He says... Uh, enjoyed your YouTube clips. I'm trying to sort out and create a taxonomy of counter time and would appreciate your thoughts on what counter time is what it, and what is meant by the terms controlling tempo, stealing time, and broken tempo. And finally, if time permits, how does counter time relate to complex and second intention attacks? Thank you. <laughs> Wow. You don't ask for much, Mitch. Yeah, you're not asking for a lot, are you? We just finished a segment on uh, timing, distance, and tempo. We might refer him to that to help on what we're going to do now. Yeah, but it's not exactly the same because he has. No, yeah, no. Yeah. No, I want, to, I want to talk about counter time essentially. Yeah. Okay. The counter time depends upon the tempo and timing and distance, of course. It also, he's got uh, second intention attacks too. Yeah, okay, and that's... Uh, and also stealing time, because that's, that's not exactly the same as broken tempo, is it? Uh, uh, not exactly, but it's yeah. it's in there, yes. Okay. There's a... Uh, what did we say, counter time and... Uh, uh, counter time, stealing time, broken tempo, uh, and how does counter time relate to complex and yeah. second intention okay, attacks? Okay, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll uh, second intention and counter time are one and the same thing, so we'll talk about that. And, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I can always remind you part yeah, of the question. You? Yeah, would yeah. you? Or you can ask what's the next you, bit. You give me some guidance from behind the camera there. Okay. Uh, well, Mitch, the the essential, the central issue in your question, I believe, uh, revolves around counter time and second intention, and uh, uh, they go together. Obviously, you uh, all good fencing is second intention. There is no such thing as first intention on the highest levels of fencing, and. Uh, the question is then, what is it? You know, why? How does that work? Well, I give you a simple example. Uh, there are defensive parries and there are offensive parries. And on the lowest level, the beginning level of fencing, the lower levels of fencing, uh, the fencer unavoidably uses parries as a defensive means. You have to. But on the higher levels, the parry becomes an offensive movement also, so there really is no defensive action outside of that. And uh, let me say, as an illustration, if I'm fencing you, what I want to do is to set a nice tempo in the mouth, and try to get you in a position where you'll attack me. That's what I'm after, see. I may look like I'm going to attack you, or I'm getting ready to attack you. I'm going, hey, 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 hey. But what was on my mind is, if I do this enough at the right distance, you will try to take advantage of it and try to hit me with something. So I'll take the bait. You'll, there we go. You'll take the bait. That's a really good way to put it. And that's when high-level fencing starts. So I would, I'm out there saying, hey, 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 hey. Hey, and you try to hit me, kaboom, the parry repost is waiting for you. And that's an offensive parry repost then, isn't it? I'm not standing back defending myself in that sense of parry repost defensively. I'm actually planning to hit you with a repost in advance on my invitation. See? So I'm inviting you, you take the bait or you take the invitation, and I've got an offensive parry waiting for you. Uh, that's where all good fencing should start. You shouldn't be standing around in any fencing bout uh, wondering what to do or planning to see or, or planning say if you see an opening or you see something you'll try to 
penetrate it. No, you should start out by trying to control the bout, and that means controlling the tempo, hey, 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 or with a soft tempo, hey, 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 to keep your opponent always a little bit on the edge. So when you step in and give them that big obvious target to hit, they can't resist trying to reach for it, and bang, you got the offensive parry repost waiting for them. In my book, there's no such thing <coughs> as a uh, defensive parry repost. Now, I know we're splitting hairs, it is sort of a semantic uh, splitting of hairs here, but uh, there's, a, there's a very real element here to, to think about and to contemplate and to come to understand. The best way to fence, uh, which uh, I'll try to elucidate the advantage of this, is to always look for your opponents reaching for you. If you're looking, like I'm here, I say, hey, I'm looking for you to reach at me. Say, ta -ta 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 -ta. I'm looking for you to reach at me. See? If I'm looking for you to reach for me, that means you can't surprise me. And that fits right into my second intention idea. I'm trying to get you to reach for me, and my real attention, intention is to pick you up with an offensive parry repost. You might ask, you know, well, how about the director? or the official, the referee, uh, can he tell the difference between a defensive parry repost or an offensive parry repost? And the fact is, it's an irrelevant question. You don't really care because in either case, if I retreat and parry repost, I have right away on the repost, or if I'm going forward offensively and pick up the blade and hit, I still have right away on the repost. So that you're, you're commanding the bout to a very high degree when you play this game. I might step forward on you as a second intention setup, threatening you, and I want you to take my blade and hit me. Or I should say, I want you to take my blade and try to hit me. That's better, see? Yes. So I might step forward and say, ha 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 ha, ha I'm going to get you, and give you my blade, and you uh, uh, pick it up. You say, ha ha, I've got Selberg now, you take my blade and come, and all the while I was waiting to use my parry. So I'm saying, here you are, you want my blade, here, 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 I'm going to attack you, and you, you do your, you take the blade, you come in, and then my real intention is there, which is an offensive parry repost, if that makes sense at all. There are a hundred ways to, a thousand ways to set this up, see. And you can be playing with very soft movement. You try to lull your opponent into kind of a, uh, uh, a sense of security. Ta -ta, ta -ta. It's like singing a lullaby to them, petting the blades. <laughs> and your opponent's wondering, what's Selra going to do? When's Selra going to attack me? And I'm just, I'm just trying to give you a certain sense of well-being through a slow, easy, rhythmical action and hope, if I, if I give you a quick change, that's a break in tempo, hey, la, hey, you'll pick up the blade as a reflex action and try to hit me, and then I got my parry repost waiting for you, you see? Uh, the trick is always, as Chaba Eltes once said, the secret to good fencing is to Never show them what you want. And, uh, and that's what we're doing here now. You never show them. I, show, I, I come in threatening you with the blade. That may look like I'm trying to threaten your target, but the fact is what I really want is for you to take the blade and try to hit me so I can do my counter time on you. This is counter time fencing, or second intention fencing. Yeah. And it's very <coughs> And you can, uh, like, uh, I'll just finish up by saying that you can put that counter time or second intention game to work uh, against any fencer. If you've got a fencer against you who's just a uh, hyper, hyper, uh, uh, has hyper movement all the time, <laughs> hey, 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 that guy is, it's easy to get him or her. To attack. They're coming out, oh, hey, 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 and just show them some target, and they'll.
bite on it, and you got the peri repost waiting. That's again the offensive peri repost. That's the second intention setup, and it works very well. Uh, the simpler you keep your game, the better. The one thing you don't want to do, which is the opposite of what I'm saying now, is to think of fencing as an intellectual guessing game. Like if I fade here, will he parry so I can hit over there? So and uh, it's the, the intellect taking over. Well, if I beat the blade and disengage, will they go over there? And uh, it's too static. It's too slow. You want to combine uh, everything you want in fencing uh, in subterfuge. Never show them what you want, and then you want to have that in the context of real simplicity. If you're, and then I'll finish now, if you're looking for them to reach for you, they can never surprise you. And then it's easy to pick them up on second intention or counter time, you see. So that's about all I can say there. And uh, Mitch, if you have any other observations relative to this or questions, please send them in and we'll work on it again.